Hell. There will be a lot of questions about that, so that's why we're going to do these little 10-minute uh, webinars I'm, I've been doing called mini-webinars. And hopefully I'll keep it down to that time frame. So let's talk about this. Incident 2 means different things to different carriers. For instance, Medicare has one set of rules regarding Incident 2 which is not very well understood by medical providers and billers and managers that I've seen. Commercial insurance carriers, though, they make up their own rules. <laughs> and that's going to vary depending upon what day it is, what carrier it is, etc. The way they make it up, it doesn't matter. Uh, so therefore, you have to check with each one individually. Medicare's definition, though, is pretty simple. Incident to services are also relevant to services supervised by certain non-physician practitioners, such as physician assistants, nurse practitioners, clinical nurse specialists, blah, blah, blah. These services are subject to the same requirements as physician supervised services. Remember, this incident two services are supervised by non-physician practitioners are reimbursed at 85% of the physician fee schedule. So what it's basically saying is if you're um, doing services, uh, billing them out under the nurse practitioner PA, it's at 85%. So some terms we need to understand when we're talking about incident two services. Actively involved, I'm going to go through each one of these right here with you. Direct supervision and employee, because those definitions matter when we're talking about Medicare here. Actively involved means physician personally performed an initial service and monitors the course of treatment. You cannot bill out under the physician for a nurse practitioner service or a PA service today if the physician never saw the patient, never performed an initial service, uh, such as an office visit, uh, and is not monitoring the course of treatment. Supervision levels. There's three different supervision levels. We have personal supervision, means that the doctor has hands on, it's in the room with the patient. Direct supervision means that the doctor's in the suite, but no face-to-face -face is required. The doctor does not have to be in the same room as the patient. General supervision means the physician ordered it, and it can be performed by any employee. When we're talking about employee, what's the definition? Well, you have the W-2 employee. That's your hourly or uh, the uh, salaried employees that you pay with uh, paychecks. Leased employees, maybe you went into some kind of an agreement with a company to lease specific employees, like uh, ADF does that. And uh, you may have a, an agreement that you're leasing an employee for a particular period. Or you may have independent contractors. Those are usually people that's working for you, but you're not setting their hours. They're not using your equipment. They're using their equipment, et cetera. So it has to be someone that you have some kind of financial interest in that's doing the service. Now, if we're talking about incident two, it's only in the office. For instance, if we're talking about uh, service in the hospital, uh, your nurse practitioner goes to the hospital and does a service, or your PA or any other non-physician practitioner goes to the hospital, you can't bill those out under Incident 2. You have to bill it out under them. Bill it out under the non-physician practitioner's number. If they go to the SNF unit, the skilled nursing facility, or the uh, nursing home, either one, uh, it's, again, billed under the non-physician practitioner. Same thing if they go to assisted living. You can't bill it out. Uh, under the physician's number if the non-physician practitioner went. Uh, if it's a home visit, you have to bill it out under the non-physician practitioner also with certain exceptions. If you're in a medically underserved area where no available home health is there, then yes, you can have that billed out under the physician's number under general supervision. But you have to make sure that you're in one of those areas right there before you do that. Uh, now, for instance, a lot of times when we're talking when we're talking incident two, we wonder about well, incident two requirements for billing out a nurse visit. That's generally what it's called. But a 99211 can be performed by a physician, a non-physician practitioner, or a nurse. But any employee can provide a 99211, regardless if they have credentials, if they're an MA, uh, if they're an LVN, LPN, RN, or if they have no letters after their name. Um, as long as it's medically necessary, it's documented, and the provider's in the suite at the time. Remember, direct supervision. Medicare is pretty clear about billing 99211, and Medicare does not require the physician to have a face-to-face -face with the patient if your nurse is doing the service. Commercial carriers almost never stipulate the rules regarding 99211, so 
if there's an absence of rules out there, then I generally go with Medicare's rules. Uh, one question coming up about a 11 often is, do the vitals have to be done? I've actually heard coding classes teach that the vitals have to be taken in order to build a 99211. I've been in seminars where they said, make sure we do the vitals so that we can justify 99211. That's false coding. That's dangerous. You've got to be careful. And I don't care if the person that's teaching the class is a certified coder with whatever association or if they for the NFL. It doesn't matter if they're a physician or a college professor. If they teach you something that's wrong, it's not going to be them that gets in trouble if you get audited. So just because someone has letters after the name doesn't necessarily mean you automatically have to trust them, okay? Now, also questions I see about 99211 is, can an MA perform a 99212, for instance? Uh, yeah, uh, that question comes up a lot, and the answer is no, they cannot. Uh, the only level a non-practitioner can perform is a 99211. Can we build a 99211 when a patient comes in for a blood draw? Uh, that's dangerous. If the, all that's being done is a blood draw, then code 36415 covers that. I've seen doctors get in trouble because the nurse was billing out a 99211 because any time they did a blood draw or a patient comes in just to get an injection in the arm and they bail out the 96372 and the J code for the depo get better, and then they throw on to a 99211 and with it, so I'm thinking it's all incident too. You've got to be careful to make sure that your documentation is showing what you're doing and you don't bill more than what you're actually doing. What about the non-physician or the, I mean, the nurse practitioner or the PA, physician assistant or CMN billing? If you have one of these in your practice, you need to make sure that they have a Medicare provider number because there's going to be times when you bill under the non-physician practitioner's number and other times when you bill under the physician's number. Now, I've created a little guide right here to make it real easy for you. It's called the 3N Guideline. Uh, and I took this from Medicare's guidelines, and I basically put it in my own words. Three ends. If it's a new patient, you bill under the non-physician practitioner's number. You cannot bill incident two. If it's a new problem, bill under the non-physician practitioner's number. If a patient's coming in for getting uh, hypertension follow-up, diabetes follow-up, GERD follow-up, et cetera, fine, go ahead and bill it out on incident two. But if the patient comes in and says, I'm here today because I banged up my knee and it hurts, then we have to bill it, that one, that visit, under the non-physician practitioner's number. If the physician is not in the suite when the patient comes in and seeing the non-physician practitioner, we have to bill it out under the non-physician practitioner's number. Note that these are Medicare guidelines and may or may not be followed by commercial insurance, the NFL or your local cable provider. Um, every carrier can make up their own rules. Most have not published those rules. So in absence of having published rules from the carrier, I normally fall back on Medicare's guidelines. You say, wait, if we bill under the non-physician practitioner's number, we have a 15% hit with Medicare and some commercial carriers. And that's true. I've seen some carriers doing that. So that's why it's important that if you can bill it out under incident two legally and ethically and the doctors on the premises and all, yeah, go ahead and do it. That way you bill it under the doctor's number and you don't have a 15% hit. But if it's one of these three instances where it's a new patient, new problem, or the doctor's not in the suite, don't miss that. Don't go into the gray area. Don't do not do something wrong just for the money, okay? Don't do it. It's not worth it, okay? What about flu shots, EKGs, lab tests, or x-rays? Uh, I get that question a lot. Does the physician have to be in the suite when we do those as well? Uh, these services have their own statutory benefit categories, and so therefore they're not, they don't fall into the incident too. So the doctor does not have to be in the uh, clinic whenever these right here are being done. They don't have to be on the suite. Uh, what if you have more questions? Well, you're welcome to call Crystal, uh, email Crystal, uh, email me, and we will schedule a time, and I'll do a phone call with you and your uh, manager and your physician all at the same time, and we'll talk about any other questions you may have. Um, most of the time, I don't charge for these. If it's a simple little question or something like that, I have to do some research, obviously I'm going to have to charge you because I have to make a living. If you have additional questions, of course, you're welcome to give Crystal a call uh, or email us. Uh, visit our brand new website. Uh, we just rolled out uh, yesterday, January uh, 13th. Um, brand new website with all the free webinars on it that we're doing and other things. So make sure you visit the website. 
thank you much. Have a wonderful day. And uh, once